Hello everyone, my name is Insung Kang and I'm a PhD candidate at Exoskeleton Prosthetic Intelligent Controls Lab at Georgia Tech and today I'll be presenting our work on real-time gait phase estimation for robotic hip exoskeleton control during multimodal locomotion. Over the years we've seen some huge improvements in the exoskeleton technologies that can improve humans for better mobility. We're seeing some exciting results from different research and industry groups uh, that can augment humans for better community ambulation capabilities. These devices pr typically provide a system and a lower limb joint for, that can augment uh, physical capabilities. And we're in the really exciting times where we can really see a huge benefit of using these wearable devices uh, that can improve quality of life. So how do we control these exoskeleton devices? We typically break this down into three control layers where we have high, mid, and low level control layers. High level layers dictate the user state variables such as the ambulation modes and walking speed that understand about user's current state. And the state variable will trickle down into mid-level layer where we implement the dynamic equations such as the torque controller, impedance controller, and so forth. Um, where we utilize the state information to understand where in the gate cycle we want to provide assistance uh, with the relevant joint torques. And the command and torque goes down into the low level control layer where we do different type of low level algorithm to ensure that the command and torque is matched, such as the close loop feedback control. So one of the common control parameters that's being used in the middle level control layer for the exoskeleton is a gate phase, which is a phase representation of the user's gate cycle during movement. Uh, it leveraged the cyclical nature of locomotion representing 0% to 100%, which both reference to a certain gait event, mainly in this cartoon is a heel strike. Uh, this is an important control parameters that dictates the exoskeleton's assistant timing. So what are the commonly used gait phase estimation methods currently available in the literature? Uh, some of them are adaptive oscillators and phase variables, uh, which both leverages the uh, sinusoidal nature of the hip movement. Uh, with slight differences where an oscillator uses the uh, frequency domain uh, extraction whereas the phase variable is mapping the direct kinematic information to a phase portrait. Both are great uh, except it has some limitations where it needs a smooth transient movement from one mode to another um, and cannot have any abrupt changes of speed and so forth. Uh, the, but the most commonly used method is a time-based estimation where you use a mechanical sensor information, such as a foot switch using an FSR sensor, to figure out the gate event and linearly interpolating the gate phase uh, using an average strike duration computed from these uh, sensor information. So these three methods are commonly used in different literatures, but there's a huge limitation of using these methods into a real world scenario, mainly overground locomotion, because if you look at the hip joint demand during uh, multi-mode ambulations, you can obviously see that there's a clear difference in the biological joint demand across different modes. And this means that the hip assistance strategy should be different. And these require different um, timings of, of assistance, which basically means that you need an accurate gate phase information to provide a seamless and a natural assistance during uh, transitional periods. With that, we've seen a clear gap in the field where we need to develop a real-time gate phase estimator that's capable of estimating the user's gate phase during multimodal uh, overground locomotion. Um, we wanted to develop a model that does not require any additional domain knowledge, such as the user's current ambulation mode, and that can utilize sensor information that's native to the exoskeleton device. Um, to do this, we leverage the state-of-the-art deep learning techniques where we can extract out additional feature information uh, from the raw sensor data that the common uh, and typical machine learning model cannot do. We used a bilateral robotic hip exoskeleton developed by Samsung Electronics, which has a mass of about 2.1 kilograms, has a capability of generating peak torques about 12 meter bilaterally for both hip flexion and extension. This device has several sensors where we can measure the hip joint encoder um, data as well as six axis IMU for acceleration gy scrub data. Uh, both of them are sampled at 200 hertz. Um, we added additional coprocessor for real time inference where uh, we communicated with uh, this NVIDIA Jetson with the Samsung device through TCP IP where the raw data is streamed to the Jetson Nano 
and where we can infer the user's gate phase through a deep learning model and then this estimated variable goes back to the device and provides relevant joint torques. To provide an assistance using this exoskeleton, we use a biological torque controller, which has shown a nice result in different literature studies in augmenting human walking. And the benefit is that it can easily generalize to across, uh, across different ambulation modes. So we do this by concatenating uh, different univariate Gaussians uh, that can be tuned into a different profile shape using a tuning parameter of uh, targeted joint torques as well as the input gate face. Um, we set the peak joint torque into three different newton meters of magnitude for different ascent, level ground, and descent modes to reflect an assistant that is relevant to the user's biological joint demand. So to do this, we've recruited 10 able-bodied subjects, uh, walked in an inlet train park um, at self-selected walking speed while wearing this hip exoskeleton. Each subject rec uh, recruited were completed a five circuit trials of clockwise and counterclockwise to capture five ambulation modes. Uh, the ramp incline was set to 11 degrees and stair height was set to 15.24 centimeters. Um, and the subject was uh, walking with the exoskeleton while the biological torque controller was providing relevant assistant profiles. Um, the key was that this had a manual keyboard input where the experimenter was holding a computer uh, connected via Bluetooth where we can punch in the current ambulation mode so that we can transit from one assistant profile to another. For estimating the gate phase during this locomotion, we use time-based estimation where we use a single stride duration as the average stride duration to accommodate the dynamic changes of, uh, of mode to another. Um, typically, time-based estimation uses the heel contact as the gate event but because we wanted to use a sensor that's native to the device itself, we use the hip joint angle, uh, where we use the maximum hip extension, which is the peak hip joint angle, as a way to uh, reference the toe off uh, of the gait cycle. So one of the key things during the uh, model training is that re-representation of the gait phase into a uh, Cartesian coordinates, where the gate phase had a discontinuity from 0 to 100%, where both of them are representing the same gate events, we had to reconstruct the data into XY coordinates so that there's continuity in the system. Um, we've explored two different commonly used deep learning techniques, mainly the CNN and LSTM, but the output of these uh, model through model optimization has similar performance, so we use CNN as the chosen method because LSTM typically takes a longer time to train. We use the 10 channel data, the hip joint encoder bilaterally, as well as the IMU, and then a five fold cross validation for each subjects. Uh, we use the RMSE as an evaluation metric where we computed the angular similarity metric of computing the cosine distance between the uh, ground truth and the estimated uh, gate phase in the Cartesian coordinates. After a full sweep of hyperparameter optimization, we were able to converge to a CNN architecture where we had two 1D convolution layers uh, with a kernel size of 20. The input uh, size was 80 samples where we had the batch norm layer and the initial stage. This layer normalized the input data into a zero mean and unit variance. Um, after the CNN layers, we had a fully connected dense layer at the end where we map the output of the CNN into a reduced dimension, eventually to a four outputs of left, right, X and Y Cartesian coordinates. And after reconstructing this estimated gate phase into the relevant 0-100% uh, percentage representation, this gets input into biological torque controller along with the manual keyboard input of the user uh, of the current ambulation mode to uh, generate the relevant exoskeleton torque. So overall, our gate phase estimation method using CNN architecture significantly outperformed the TBE, which is a time-based estimation method. Uh, in general, our CNN method had about 5% RMSE across all modes, which reflects to be about 69% better than the TBE uh, methods. This 69% uh, estimation performance is about 63% uh, reduction in the commanded torque RMSE, where we can really see that the estimating gate phase can really have an effect to the actual joint torque that's being provided to the user. 
One interesting aspect that we've seen from this result is that descent modes, mainly the ramp descent and stair descent, exhibited higher RMSE than the other modes, such as uh, ramp ascent, stair ascent, and level ground. This is potentially because the descent mode typically has a uh, faster changes of the gate dynamics, uh, where average strike duration typically shortens uh, from the level ground. So what ends up happening is that the assistance is leading the user. So it leads the user and then there's a phase where the assistant is basically providing assistance that is um, against to the user, which can cause instability of the entire system. Whereas the ascent modes, you, you usually have a, an increase of average strike duration, meaning that the gate phase estimation using TVE uh, lags the user, basically have this, uh, the system trailing the user's movement which not necessarily impedes the user's movement. Um, when we look at the mode transitions, we're seeing that CNN clearly outperforms the TVE by reducing the RMSE by 67% across all mode transitions. So we can really see that there's a consistency of a good performance of using our CNN approach. To give a little bit better uh, context as to how this, our gate phase estimation is actually performing in real time, I've plotted a representative subject's time series plot that is very close to the overall CNN performance. So on the top of the blue graph shows what our gate phase estimator is doing in different ambulation modes as well as mode transition in between and the relevant assistant joint torques that's computed using this gate phase estimation. Uh, we can clearly see that across all modes, we're seeing a very consistent performance using our CNN, whereas on the bottom with the red graph, the TBE methods can uh, either lead or lag depending on the, the different modes, uh, especially when you look at the, any of the descent modes, the stair descent, ramp descent, we, you can see that there's a clear um, um, error in the estimation, which really induces a higher error on the assisted torque uh, which can really cause a huge um, instability in the entire system and discomfort to the user. Some key takeaways from our study is that our phase estimator was possible because the CNN had an end-to-end -end approach extracting feature information during training process. Uh, our results showed a comparable re result as other studies, but it is novel because we expanded to other ambulation modes. Poor phase estimation led to an inaccurate torque profile um, to give a better context, our CNN had about 0.77 newton meter of RMS in joint torques, whereas the TV had 2.08 newton meters. Uh, it sounds small, but given that, that we've only provided a system in the range of 3 to 6 newton meters, this percentage is fairly large. A uh, potential reason for poor TV performance was because there's a false peak detection, especially in the descent modes, where there's an abrupt change in the transitions, resetting the TV gate phase to 0%. Uh, changes the walking speed during overground can cause the phase estimation to either lead or lag. And the effect of average strike duration time during the deset modes um, can really uh, cause the system to go unstable. Our CNN, in comparison, had about 46% better performance during the deset mode transitions. A future study from our work will kind of lead to developing a user independent phase estimator where we can uh, implement our approach to a novel user. Generalizability to other training conditions such as uh, developing a model that can work on other train intensities such as different slope uh, inclines and stair heights. And lastly, we can really look into how our model can affect uh, uh, perform in other clinical populations such as stroke gait.